Hi YouTube, and welcome back to my 50th birthday retrospective, uh, which I've decided to call this now. <laughs> and uh, today I'm talking about when I was uh, 44. And uh, this one, this video I've actually taken a while to get to because it's probably the, the hardest year for me to talk about, um, but it needs to be included. It's important. Um, I turned 44 at the end of 2015, and then um, in 20, and then you know, cause my birthday. I, I've said this before. My birthday is is in December, so most of my my years are always the year after I was born. You know what I mean. Anyways, I turned turned 44 in in 2015, um, and then in January of 2016. Um, that was the, uh, the month, the year, um, that I lost my husband, um, when he died by suicide. Um, I mentioned, I think, in the last video about his mental health state and the deterioration of it, um, and I started being really worried in the early part of January, because he, he died January 31st, um, and so the early part of January he was starting to get more erratic um his moods were off um his behavior was abnormal uh, he had always been very much um he, he couldn't sit still he was the kind of person who never could sit still so whenever we had conversations it was often me sitting down and him pacing in front of me um and he became sedentary um he would sit and not move for hours, and that was so unusual for him. Um, and he was cold all the time, and he was he was always like too hot. He was always running around in just his boxers because uh, he was always too hot. I uh, didn't want to wear clothes, <laughs> and I had to make him wear the boxers. Uh, but yes, he, he he was he was just always too hot. Um, you know needed like most most of the year in bed he'd sleep with just a sheet and never a comforter or anything because um just everything was just always too hot for him and all of a sudden he was in sweatpants and in a hoodie and and, and just layering up and and shivering and cold um so i knew i knew something was wrong um i i i it, it was it was it, it was the culmination of of all the mental health things that had had been happening over the past year, and I reached out to his brother, who besides me was was the other person that I knew that knew him best, uh, knew him you know better than me obviously because they they'd grown up together and things and they'd even after um, after they were adults and finished college and things the two of them actually shared um, Dave's house together for a, a while at least until his brother moved to California uh, with his girlfriend and, and they lived um, out there for a few years. But, so yeah, uh, his brother knew him, you know, uh, on a level that I obviously didn't uh, since I just hadn't known Dave as long. I mean, you know, how do you compare a decade to, you know, 30, 40 years? And so I... I I reached out to his brother and I explained what was going on, explained the behaviors I was seeing. I'm like, I am at my wit's end. I don't know what else to do. You know, what would you do? Um, you know, can you talk to him? You know, because I mean, obviously in, in situations where you know someone is, is depressed and, and suicidal, you know, you want to get help for them. You want them to see, see a doctor and everything. But he was. That's the thing is he had a psychiatrist um and he'd actually a few months before that also added a psychologist um and was seeing each of them weekly um the psychiatrist had prescribed him medication he'd been on medic uh, antidepressants for several years um several years before i met him even so he so more than a decade on, on medication so he's taking medication he was seeking help um you know and, and I, I i thought it was a good sign that he actually decided to go see a therapist on top of a psychiatrist 
because uh, the psychiatrist was less about the talk therapy and more about the medication and things and so Dave was like I need to talk um, and, and 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 just talking to me wasn't cutting it anymore and, and obviously he talked to me and I anytime he really needed to talk I mean he often would come into my office here and he would just sit down and, and just you know unload um, and I would take the time to listen to him so I was you know he knew I was there for him um, he did start throwing fits and tantrums and things and like and then the next day would be like well you hate me now you're when you when you're leaving and I'm like I don't hate you I love you and I'm not going anywhere he was convinced I was gonna leave him um, and 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 but then he was he was trying to trigger me to do it or, or testing me or you know these are these I know these are all common behaviors and common warning signs and red flags um, and so it was like that's why I was at my wit's end because he was he he was seeking help he had doctors he had a therapist he was on medication um, but the medication didn't seem to be working anymore I, I know that was one of his complaints it's like nothing's working anymore um, and then I'm just trying to I'm just trying to think of timeline oh yeah so then um, so he was still working as an adjunct professor as well and one afternoon when he he had class that he was teaching and I think in office hours and then he was supposed to come home for dinner and he didn't and he called me and said hey I'm at this crisis center I was like okay um, the crisis center actually let him come home to pack a suitcase and then the two of us so I then I would drive him back to the, the, the center and check him in um, so we did that packed him a suitcase um, I went with him um, supported him entirely I was like whatever you need you know get help let's let's get let's get you the help you need and uh, so they, they went through the questionnaire and everything of, of what they needed him to provide. And uh, uh, and then they checked him in and, and I went home and I was like, I, a part of me was actually felt a sense of relief. Like, oh, you know, he, he, he knew he was spiraling out of control and he's getting, he's getting this help he needs. But then the next afternoon he calls me again and is like, I'm bored pick me up I'm checked out <laughs> and I I had wrongly assumed that this facility he checked himself into would hold him for 72 hours and 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 make him go through whatever it is that you need to go through in a, in a crisis center but um clever little shit that he was um picked a place that didn't have the mandatory 72 hour hold uh, I found that out after he checked himself out and he was bored he wanted to go uh, and the place wasn't helping him and I was like you know do we want to go somewhere else and he just kind of brushed it off and we we went out to eat and went home and that was kind of the end of it because so it was a Thursday that we he, he got checked in no was it it's a Wednesday or Thursday um, yes, it was a Wednesday that he was checked in, Thursday that we checked out. Um, I think he still had a class on Friday. Um, or maybe not. I, I don't remember the details exactly anymore. I do remember on Saturday that we, we often went out for brunch on Saturdays. And we decided to go downtown and go have brunch. And I thought, hey, why don't we get, you know, find, find an activity to do that we can spend time together this afternoon? Because I know one of the things is he, he always wanted to spend more time with me. And I, I was always pretty busy with my business and uh, with writing and everything else. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to, to, I'm going to focus um, my, the entire weekend on you. Um, until we can figure out what else to do for your for your mental health and so we actually went to a bookstore one of the things we did was picked out some coloring books and got some uh, colored pencils and so after we had brunch we went home 
and we spent the entire afternoon in the dining room talking and coloring and coloring books. Um, he always enjoyed things that what, what he considered were Zen activities. Um, and I always thought that, that coloring was a, was a pretty Zen thing to do. And I, I saw a lot of things on the internet at the time of, of people really touting, you know, how coloring and coloring books really kind of help them center themselves and, and, and help with their mental health. And so that was my thoughts. Like, let's, let's do this. Let's try this. And I was willing to, to dedicate, you know, whatever time we needed to sitting there and coloring and talking and whatever um, until we could figure out something better. And then the next morning, um, he actually, because I, I think I mentioned that we had separate bedrooms for a myriad of reasons, and he came downstairs and crawled into bed with me in the morning, um, which was somewhat unusual, but it was like, okay, um, you know, he, he was he was feeling the need to be close, and I absolutely would not never have discouraged that um and so we kind of had kind of cuddled um for a good hour or two and then he said hey you know what i'm hungry would you make french toast and i just happened to have enough ingredients to make some french toast and so i was like sure i you know um he rarely had breakfast um but him having an appetite was um it wasn't wasn't because sometimes we would have brunch and, and you know because it was a by that time it was like one or two in the afternoon and so it was not unusual for us to eat and and me making kind of a brunch thing um i i, I did that on occasion so if that wasn't too unusual that actually wasn't too much of a red flag um and so i, I made coffee i made french toast and we sat at our we have a, a, a kitchen island with with bar stools and stuff and so we sat there and had breakfast and he seemed in really good spirits and this was the red flag that I missed that day um, and I'm, I'm people keep telling me don't blame yourself it's not your fault and everything but um, this absolutely was a red flag that I just wasn't paying attention to but he was in better spirits and he was running around in his underwear like he usually did he was up pacing when he was talking to me uh, when he wasn't eating and stuff um, and then he was like, you know what? I haven't been to Starbucks um, to get a, a Wall Street Journal in a while. I think I want to do that. Um, which was, had been like every weekend, he would always go to Starbucks in the afternoon for a couple hours and get a Wall Street Journal and read it and have coffee. And this was kind of a solo thing that he always did. Sometimes I would go with him, but he actually preferred doing it by himself. The entire 10 years I knew him, this was something he did very often. It's something that kind of tapered off a lot in the last year or two. Um, before this happened, as I was like, okay, you're, you're feeling good. You, do you want me to go with you? He's like, no, I really, I, I would r rather go by myself. I was like, okay. I was like, well, remember we're having a snowstorm tonight and, you know, be home before eight. I will be making dinner. Dinner will be ready, you know, uh, at or before eight and, uh, you know, and, and enjoy yourself, you know, and, and the requisite is one of the things that we always is a habit that we got to kind of got into is whenever one of us left the house is to say I love you and drive safe and we always said it a, a, even if we were mad at each other we always said it and we said it that day and I'm you know part of me is very glad that we kept that habit going because uh, that was literally the last thing that I got to say to him because you know, as, as you can guess, like he didn't come home, and you know, I started. Then the snowstorm hit, and I started calling around to hospitals first to see if he had been in a crash, if he'd been checked in. Nope. So I called the police, and you know, with his mental health history, I kind of said, you know, I'm concerned. Um, and they were like, well, give us his license plate number, and and if we if we get a hit on it, we'll let you know. And at seven in the, the next morning, they did get a hit on his license plate and it was parked at a hotel. Uh, and and uh, it was, you know, I, I, I go into more detail about this in, in one of my old videos, um, if you want to look it up. But uh, basically, yeah, he, he went to the hotel to to end his life. And um, I he actually... He, the, the, the engineer in him, he actually broke 
the lock. It, the, it was a hotel. It was a brand new hotel, and with all of the the electronic key card only lock, so there's no physical key that would open the door. And he figured out a way to hack the damn thing to keep even a master key from opening it because the the hotel because I went and talked to the hotel manager she came with me to try and open the door her key didn't work and so she called the uh, the engineer uh, the built the building engineer and and he brought the master key and it's like a big you know computer keyboard thing and he he plugged it in it didn't work uh, <laughs> I don't I honestly don't know how they managed to open the door it took them about two or three hours to do it but once that master key wasn't working, I I just, I knew. His car was downstairs. The police had found it because the alarm had been going off and, and eventually because it died, because the battery died. And, um, you know, and, and he wasn't responding to the door. The door was locked. The door couldn't be broken into. And so I just kind of put all the pieces together and I was like, yeah, he's gone. I just, I just knew, and so I just waited in the lobby until they opened it up and, and confirmed um, everything, and then I called his brother, and his brother came, and, and his brother called his dad, and, and just, you know, and obviously we had to talk to detectives, just the whole, the whole nine yards, so that, that, that was uh, probably one of the hardest days um, I had to deal with in, 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 in my memory of things, I mean, you know, the death of my grandfather, the death of my grandmother were both difficult, but that, that was, that was a hard one. You know, with the, the person I was expecting to grow old with, gone, you know. So, the rest of that year was, was tough. Um, I kind of really took a big step back from my business. Thankfully, I had a number of subcontractors that were working for me at the time, and so I just, like, hate can you guys just handle things for me? Um, and 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 they did. They 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 kept my business going while I dealt with everything. Um, I am grateful that his family was amazing. Um, there was no legal will uh, in terms of one that was witnessed by a lawyer and, 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 and documented and all, all, all the things that you're supposed to do when you're writing a will. He just kind of hand scribbled one at the last minute <laughs> and it was left in the hotel room along with several letters. Um, one to his family, one to me, etc. And, uh, thankfully like the, his, his family, so his brother, his dad and I, uh, we kind of parsed through this thing and, and it, let me just say it was not, he, he was certainly not quite in his right mind. And we knew it just from reading it because it made no sense financially. And he was a financial whiz. Um, he had just gotten that, that, uh, master's degree in, in, um, financial, not, well, he called it financial engineering, but it was also, um, oh, I forget what it was called, but he was really good at finance and investments and all that, all, all that good stuff. So... Um, the way he kind of delegated things for the, for, for his estate didn't make sense financially at all. And so his brother, his dad and I kind of sat down and it's like, okay, well, what does make sense? You know, what, trying to, to maintain his wishes, but at the same time also, um, make it make sense basically. Cause, cause I think he wanted us to set up a trust for, the dogs, a separate trust for the house, a separate trust for me. A se you know, they, they were like a half a dozen different trusts that he wanted set up. And I was like, that makes no sense. <laughs> so so we we came to a full agreement. Um, I ended up selling the income property that, that he had um, and paying off the mortgage on my house. Um, and, and, and we set up a, a, a single trust and, and, and just kind of delegated things after that. And there was literally no strife at all. I know I got lucky. I've heard horror stories of, of strife, especially between, um, the, uh, the dead spouse's family and, and the, and the, the living spouse and, and, and where, you know, what things can have happened and stuff. And we, we were all on the same page about everything. And I, I am so grateful that they were as understanding and, and I tried to be understanding 
back because you know we, we we'd all lost um, someone that we loved and there was absolutely no reason to squabble over you know what he'd left behind and uh, and so yeah we we came to a wonderful understanding about everything I made sure that his nephew um, I, I helped fund his nephew's college fund with some of the money and just you know I, I did what I could um, to, to make sure that 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 I included them and they made sure I was included and just you know I, I'm very grateful that they were um, we were there for each other let's put it that way um, and then the the friends in my friend circle my uh, I, I don't have a huge friend circle but those that I do have were all amazing and, um, and there there were a couple of issues uh, with a couple of people who I that's one one thing for sure is a, a traumatic event like that will show you um, who your friends are and who your friends aren't the one friend that I thought I could count on was um, someone who had also lost her husband um, to suicide um, and she turned on me all because um, I kept saying you know and it was true that the last thing that Dave and I said to each other was I love you her husband she and her husband had a huge fight um, and then she found him two days later and so she accused me of lying literally and then proceeded to just cut me out of her she blocked me everywhere on social media blocked my phone number um blocked my email and then ended up because my my other the rest of the my friend circle stuck by me um ended up just uh cutting all of them out of her life and and everything and we haven't heard from her since I, 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 under, I, I think I understand why she react. I mean, obviously, she, I'm guessing, carries a lot of guilt over what happened. Although it wasn't her fault whatsoever. I mean, couples fight, and you don't expect your spouse to go out and and and, uh, and commit suicide for you know. So I, you know, I, but, um. I'm not about to, I wasn't about to go around lying to anyone about what, what was it? Because people would ask me and, and I, I, I responded honestly. This is literally what we said. Um, and it, it hurt a lot that she had that reaction. I, I do understand. I, I, I do have, like, if I had had her, um experience and if if Dave and I had had a fight uh, and everything and then someone else had you know I I put myself in her shoes and I can understand um, I, I'm still hurt by every by 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 her reaction but at the same time I understand it so uh, but the rest of my friends were absolutely amazing they they were so supportive they helped me go through everything and sort through all his belongings and I made sure that everything that should have you know stayed with his family did um, everything else I donated um, I kept a few things um, uh, obviously uh, actually these the weird thing but these glasses are were his I mean not the not the lenses but the the, the frames were his um, he had just gotten them uh, maybe a month or two before so they were you know branded frames and I was like well these are nice frames <laughs> so when I needed to get a new prescription I was like hey can we use these frames so I I, I actually kept his frames so so there's that um, so a couple of people a couple of little, little things like that um, I kept one thing that really helped me get through that year I mean since I had to step back from my business, uh, there was so much legal paperwork that I had to deal with, with the estate, even with everyone being on board, even with everyone agreeing, there was no court battles <laughs> over anything. And it still took me a good two or three years to finally close everything out and transfer everything. And just, it, it was, 
it was quite a process. Um, and so I needed some major escapism that year. And I had been, I, one of the TV shows I kind of, I was very aware of, but I didn't really get into was Supernatural. Um, although I, I mentioned in the previous video that I, I was, had gotten really into fan fiction, both reading and writing of it, um, in 2015, and I had started coming across quite a lot of, of Supernatural fan fiction. It's actually one of the most prolific fandoms out there for fan fiction. And, uh, I was like, you know, maybe I should check out the show. And so once things, once the dust settled a bit in 2016, I was like, okay, I just need something that I can just sit on the couch and just binge and get my mind off of everything because, you know, you just, you, you can only cry so much. <laughs> um, and so I started watching that show. Binge the entire 11 seasons that had aired at that point um, and then started season 12 when it came out um, in October of that year, I believe. And I've been kind of obsessed with the show ever since. Uh, it... I, t I, the obsession is kind of tied into the whole losing of of my husband and and just you know kind of embracing this this other universe and and and, and this place to escape to with my mind and one of the other things I did besides watching um, all the episodes is they do a lot of conventions and I started watching a lot of their convention footage on YouTube and uh, these people are really funny <laughs> I laughed so much and 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 they're the ones who helped me learn how to laugh again um and 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 brought me a little little glimmer of joy in what otherwise would have been you know a really really sad year so um so between my friends and and supernatural and everything that's that's how I got myself through that year. All right, so this video is just about a single year, and it's kind of long, so I should <laughs> I should wrap this up. I think. Um, thanks for sticking with me on this one. Uh, things will will pick up a little bit uh, in mood after after this one. So, uh, if you're enjoying this retrospective, you know, please leave thumbs ups, please leave comments, please talk and interact. I will respond. And uh, until tomorrow, you take care.